Good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Felix Panetowski, and I am the moderator of all the morning sessions of this day of the conference. So you are at the conference conversion, multiple uh, perspectives and multiple contexts. And I just want to give you a short introduction about what we are going to have today uh, during this day of this conference. And first of all, uh, just in several minutes, we have a keynote presentation uh, that will be done by Oscar Osindo. And after that, we will have a short break, about 30 minutes break from 10 to 10.30. And at 10.30, we will have a very interesting presentation by uh, Dr. Gabriel Maswa that is entitled, Lord give us Africa or we die. African local evangelists and their approaches to making converts in early Adventism. After that, at 11 uh, East African time, we will have another presentation by Dr. Eugen Zaitsev. And the title of the presentation is Conversion in Orthodox Religious Cultural Context. At 11.30, we will have a presentation by Dr. Yusri Burgius. And the title of the presentation is Conversion, Theories and Terminologies in Islamic Perspective. And at 12, at noon, we will have a presentation by Dr. James Mutua. And the title of it, Conversion in the Life of King Nebuchadnezzar. After that, we will have another very, very important event. It is networking. As I have mentioned already, we would like this conference to be a platform for all of us to participate and discuss the phenomenon of conversion. So this networking will uh, provide opportunity for us not only to be a passive participants of the conference, but also to be active participants and to discuss the most important and interesting issues about the conversion. Also, also I want to encourage all of you to ask questions. Uh, we just recently uh, got an introduction about the platform and about all the uh, uh, features of the platform that enable us to, to enhance our participation in the conference. So you may ask questions to any speaker or any participant of the conference. You can use live chats and many, many other features that can help us to get maximum out of this uh, conference. And also, I want, to, um, I, I want to introduce another very important event that will happen at, six, uh, 16, uh, at 4 p.m., let us say 4 p.m., and this is a panel discussion. It will be a live event when we will have two uh, experts and these are Dr. Oscar Osindo and Petras Bahadur. And the title of this panel discussion is Understanding the Motivation and Drivers Behind Muslim to Christian Conversion. Uh, this uh, panel discussion will be done in the form of interview, but you also can ask your questions about this important topic to the presenters. So we invite all of you uh, to participate in all those uh, presentations. So don't miss them because every presentation has some, something valuable and important for us to, to know. And now uh, this is my privilege uh, to introduce a key speaker uh, for today. And uh, the key speaker for today is uh, Dr. Oscar Osindo. Uh, Dr. Oscar Osindo uh, served the Church of Seventh-day Adventists in many different capacities. And not long time ago, uh, he was uh, one of the professors in, uh, at Adventist University of, of Africa. But after that, uh, he uh, moved to uh, World Mission Institute. And at the moment, he is a director of the World Mission Institute. And uh, in addition to that, I want to tell that Dr. Osindo is, uh, is an expert in the area of um, 
Christian Muslim dialogue and Christ, uh, Muslim Christian relationship. That is why uh, his uh, expert opinions and his experience is very valuable for understanding uh, the, the conversion in the Muslim context. So now I want to introduce uh, Dr. Oscar Osindo and his presentation is entitled The Gar Religion, Multiple Identities on the Move. So um, let us start this presentation. Uh, friends, uh, greetings to you, fellow pilgrims. Uh, it's such a privilege for me to be with you and to share Sky God. And Husseiniya Sufism and the mythical Abi Umur. Abi Umur is another figure of the Gare people, is a mythical figure, and we will uh, say much about him later. Then there is, the, there is an emerging Sunni reform movement that is locally referred to as the Ahli Sunnat, meaning those who strictly follow the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad that started from the 1980s. These three names, the Warayana, Husseiniya, and Abi Umar, are used interchangeably in this paper to refer to what some locals call the old religion. But for the sake of consistency, this paper employs Warayana. Sometimes I might use uh, dying, the dying religion to refer to Warayana or Husseiniya, Sufism to refer to Warayana, only to capture my informants' voices whenever they use these terms. This contestation is opening space for other entrants like the covert Mutakud, who claim to be purer than the Ahli Sunnat. Now again, I have, I'm putting the Mutakun in quotes uh, because this is a term I have chosen myself to label them as such because they don't have their own label name other than they say they are nothing else but Muslim. But because of their different characteristics, I chose the term mutakin, which actually means the pious ones, or the devoted ones, or the righteous ones, or the faithful ones. The mutakun are distinguished by their right of whole body water ibashan, known as sibgat allahi in the Quran. They are only a few hundred in number, but steadily growing, and are an, an, an indication that the Gare socio-religious space is open within the confines of the Sunni Islam identity. Thus, multiple identities on the move. Now let me introduce the Gare people and their habitation. Um, the Gare are an Afrochetic people group classified as Kushite. They inhabit southern Ethiopia, northern Kenya in Mandera County, and southwest Somalia in what is known as the Greater Mandera Triangle. The Segeju traditions estimate that the Gari settled in their present location between 800 and, and 100 CE. The Kenyan Gari lives in what the researchers identify as the Mandera Triangle an area between Eluak, Mandera Town, and Moyale. But some are also found further south in Wajia County. The Gare live in constant tension with their neighbors where the armed conflict in northern Kenya is a regular feature. There is a scramble for water and pasture land. The Gare, like other Somalis, proudly identifies themselves as Shafi, Sunni Muslims. 
Despite this identity, there is an intra-gare context over sacred places and spaces. Why, if they are one part, if they are one people, why the conflict? The term space can mean many things, but this presentation focuses on the competing entities for the space of ideas, of land, and of habitation. One notices that that land in Mandera County is not fenced. When you travel around, you see that. So how does move freely, guided by the availability of water and fodder? Resources are owned communally, and therefore the Gary perception is that of open space that facilitates free movement of people and livestock, and sometimes free movement of ideas. The contestation played out in the space of ideas, land, and habitation by Warayana and Ahlul Sunat is causing fissures that open spaces for other expressions like what I termed as the mutakun, which has hundreds of followers. Barely 40 years ago, the Gare almost to a man subscribed mainly to the Warayana until a reform movement started. Some young Gare men, men who schooled in Saudi Arabia returned with what they termed as a book based Islam that is contrary to the Warayana religion. The so called Islamic reform has since slowly but gradually shrunk the public dominance of Warayana. Therefore, many of the Gare refer to the Warayana as a dying religion. But even as reform finds its place, Soja says that the production of uh, spaces also results in the emergence of counter spaces which create disharmony. And this is a very vital point. We will be pursuing it in, in this paper later on. Therefore, this paper explores the relationship between Islam, Husseinia Sufism, and the sky god cult and how it led to the formation of Warayana. It also examines how this interaction caused fissures that prompted the emergence of other groups such as the Mutakin. The role of religion. The Gare, like any other society, have their set of unique problems of which they need immediate solutions. Some of their pressing problems are perennial droughts, grazing land for water, cattle, water, and food insecurity, conflict with neighbors, sickness, and bickering about how to express their religion. Religion is at the core of their identity, and so it is useful to inquire into how religion solves these problems. This is a functional inquiry. Let me rephrase the three questions raised by Stark and Bainbridge. In the context of the Gare, the three functional questions are, First, one, why do the Gari develop and embrace uh, uh, religion? Number two, what do the Gari get from religion? And number three, why are the Gari people religious in different ways? To understand the role of religion among the Gari, religion speaks to the process of conversion. Aaron Panya says that, Religion's main function is to empower adherents to make sense out of the world in which they live. The functional nature of religion organizes it in a set of beliefs and values that regulate society. In turn, believers commit themselves to these beliefs and values. The commitment theory of religion further states that believers are committed to beliefs whether they are rational or irrational. So religion has a sociological function because it enhances social harmony and integration that encourages members to aspire for greater values. Religion orders society and checks crisis. It shapes positive values that holds a society and holds civilizations together. As much as religion is functional, it is also dysfunctional. From time immemorial to the present, religion is a source of strife as it causes the division of societies, resulting in evils 
evils such as slavery, apartheid, and colonialism, which led to the marginalization and the dehumanization of many societies. A temporary example is the Islamic terrorist groups in various parts of the world that cause human crises all in the name of religion. The Kushitic cult of the sky god in the pre-Islamic period. We do not know exactly when the Kushite embraced the cult of Waka, the sky god, but this religion met the needs of the Gari. The cult of the sky god in the pre-Islamic era, era served the Kushite, who included the Gari, and it still does for those who adhere to it and are yet to embrace Islam or even Christianity. Therefore, the traditional religion of Waka is a living faith among segments of Kushitic peoples. Through this religion, they supposedly got rain, they appeased their ancestors, they were guaranteed of prosperity, and their illnesses were healed among other needs. The entry, the entry of uh, the entry of Islam into the cult of Waqa, the sky god. It is not clear exactly when Islam came to Gariland. Some scholars prefer between the 10th and the 14th centuries, but it is understood that Somalis were converted in the 1400s. Islam had to negotiate with the Kushite traditional religion regarding Islam's functional relevance, and this negotiation or conversion resulted in the Warayana. Islam reduced the power of Waqa religion drastically, but took on some of its beliefs and practices. There are traces of beliefs and practices of Waqa in Islam. The name of the sky god Waqa is still appended to the names of Somali clans, places, and some language usage today. An example is the name of the second largest town of the Gare of Kenya, which is El Waq. It is important to understand the role that the sky god played in the lives of the people, and it is still does. Mark David Barr argues that, and I quote, convert to another religion cannot or do not always wish to completely reject or break away from former beliefs and practices, but instead, continue to engage in some of them privately and despite publicly changing religion. So, end of quote. So having one foot inside and another foot outside. Another example is the Wadad, holy man, who was subsumed in Islam and found even a better place within Sufism. Iom Lewis, Reports that it reports that in the cult of Waka, the sky god, the Wadad was a holy man, the guardian of the divine oracles, community judge, marriage officer, political advisor, the wise man, rainmaker, sacrifice and sacrifice ritual leader. In addition, the Wadad was the spiritual leader, healer, um, uh, ritual leader, and fortune teller. Barren women went for fertility rituals. Those beliefs and practices that fulfilled their functional needs found continuity in the, syncret in the syncretistic religion of Islam and the cult of Waqa. In the Gare, the Abbasera, and uh, here on the screen, uh, actually I met the, uh, the Abbasera of uh, Elwa a couple of years ago and uh, had a long conversation uh, with him. Uh, in the Gare, the Abbasera, which means father of warning, is a man with mystic powers, took over cultic functions of the Wadad. And I met this man and he, he showed me all his paraphernalia and uh, symbols of power and how he goes about his work. The Ahl Sunnat then came in came in to reform this syncretistic Islam 
or the cult of the sky god. Now, the Gare subscribed to and adhered to the Warayana form of worship for many centuries. It was in the 1980s when the religious reform towards the Quran and the Hadith based faith began. The spread of Salafi and Wahhabi radical movements have put pressure on Sufi practices such as the veneration of saints. Tombs of Sufi sheikhs, Sufi sheikhs have been desecrated. A more radicalized form of Islam in East Africa owes much to the Wahhabi and Salafi reform from the Arab world. The Wahhabi influence in East Africa is traced to Muslims who studied in Arabia and returned in the 1980s. Sheikh Dayo, who initiated the reform in Gare, is one of those. However, the Salafi reform came to East African coast through an Islamic scholar named the Sheikh Al Amin Mazrui. He died in 1947. Um, Peter Clark analyzes possible causes of this intense hate and Muslim radicalism that began in the 1980s. He says, the rise of a more assertive style of evangelical and charismatic Christianity that actively uh, proselytized in Muslim areas contributed to increased counter activities. Local Muslim organizations secured material and intellectual support from more radical uh, Islam of North Africa and Middle East. In summarizing the reform activities of Sheikh Al Amin Mazroui, Clark says that Al Amin endeavored to build Muslims' knowledge in religion and the secular sphere as a means to social liberation and self determination. Muslims at that time were afraid of colonialism and of being overtaken socially and politically by the upcountry people. Sufism and its practices are the main targets of Salafism. Theirs is an effort to realign the Gare with the national and global Islam. The Mutakin Conversion It emerged from, from field data that the Mutakim, meaning the pious ones or the God-fearing, is a small group of people but gradually, gradually and steadily growing. Although this number may appear insignificant, studies of similar movements suggest it may have the potential to evolve into a significant force. That's what scholars like uh, Mohajan Momen uh, hold. Now, some good uh, examples are the Ahmadiyya Muslim Movement and the Church of the Latter-day Saints, also colloquially known as the Mormon Church. The presence of a few Christians, though not Gare, have the potential to impact the larger community in some ways. The Mutakun allege a reformed life that is symbolized by Sibga Talahi. The Mutakun informants revealed that they read the Quran and a black book, and black again in quotes, a black book, which is, which, which actually is a Swahili translation of the Holy Bible. Given the entry of the Mutakun and on the Gare religious space, I can argue that it is a proof of the imagination of an open space of ideas in which to move freely. I shall first describe the Mutakun and their unique characteristics, and secondly, demonstrate how they fit into this space. I observed, and in fact uh, corroborated by non Gare non Muslim informants, the Mutakun respondents and their Muslim neighbors, that the Mutakun are peaceful people who shun violence and injustice in a region engulfed in violent intertribal conflicts and uh, Islamic terrorist groups like the Al-Shabaab. They strive to lead a life that is uniquely different from the larger population. The Mutakun men are committed to monogamous marriages and those who have more than one wife who are not keen to add uh, more after they embrace their new faith. 
and Mutakun families are, are smaller, like the one of my informant, uh, Osman Abdallah. It occupies a small physical place. In addition, I also witnessed the dietary habits of the Mutakun to be different from those of their kinsmen in their classification of halal, who are meaning the lawful, and haram, the unlawful meat. Some of the Mutakun do not eat uh, camel meat, which is so relished by others. By others, Camels are slaughtered during weddings and funerals, and failure to eat these meats limits their level of participation in community activities. At one point, I also participated in a wedding ceremony where I witnessed the slaughter of a camel. Osman Abdallah, my informant, and a few Mutakun declined to partake of the meat. This difference occasioned by the introit or the entry of the black book is played out in social gatherings. The Gare custom is for groups to eat from one plate, assuming that they all follow similar dietary pattern. The presence of the black book creates a counter space that results in disharmony as far as communal eating is concerned. The matter of illegal or illegality of what meats should be consumed illustrates the relationship between Ahl Sunnah, Warayana, and the Mutakun. The Gari lived the reality dictates that in their festivities, it is likely to constitute three distinct eating groups. It is an evidence of conversion process taking place. The Mutakun strive to base their faith on scriptures, and in this case, the Quran and the Bible. Now, the Mutakun faith comes across as a radical transformation of Islam that incorporates the Black Book with its doctrines in the arena of Islam. This faith has Jesus Christ in its teachings, which makes them subscribe to a different kind of Islam. They look like Sufis, but considering the act of Sibgatalahi, which is a unique, and the embrace of the Injil, I mean the Gospel, they give birth to a new religious space never imagined in Gareland. It is another conversion perspective. Let us now look at this Gare religious space so that we can get to understand the nature of the context, contestation, the conversions going on, and it is complexities. Now imagine that uh, that uh, circle, that Y, that is the Gare space. And what am I doing here? I shall use circles and Venn diagrams to illustrate the Gare space. The interconnectedness of circles shows how key players are positioned with one another. Furthermore, these circles guide this study to identify points of interconnection, the overlay and underlay. This activity is representative and interpretative of how competing entities share Gary's space. My, my, my PhD tutor, um, uh, Dr. Dr. David Singh says that conflict is a natural result of two ideo ideologies that coexist in one space. Therefore, it is important to understand what is happening at these intersections and between the overlaps as a response to the question of how Gary space is shared. The coming together of different expressions of ideas in image is in imagined and in real spaces result in complex relations as demonstrated in these circles. The field of logic and mathematics uses interconnected circles to study how entities relate to each other. Their use is also applied in other areas such as concentric circles for urban land use and economics. In recent times, missiologists have used kingdom circles to describe methodologies to reach adherents of world religions. A section of missionaries uh, to Islam used circles to explain the relationship between the kingdom of God, Islam, and Christianity. Now, uh, circle 
three one represents Gary space of land, ideas and habitation. All three designated as well. So the circle that you are seeing there on your screen, imagine that circle, which is Y, that space Y, is actually the hall of Gary. Both their land, space of land, space of ideas, and their space of habitation. And then, uh, so let's have it that. In that circle, three, two, um, you have that space Y, as you can see there, space Y. Uh, then you have uh, space C, then you have space B, and you have space A. And space C is the Ahlusunat, uh, which is now dominant, and it rides over the other groups, it rides over A and B. And A is the Mutakun, and B space is the Warayana. And X, there's that, uh, if you are uh, on your, um, that space there, X, just uh, um, um, uh, south, um, I can say southeast of that circle, just out there, is a small circle, and that is X. And X represents the non Gare the non-Muslim neighbors. And so what is happening here um, is that the, there is a part, we have talked about um, the Ahli Sunnah reform, um, which is actually dominant now in Gare, and the aim of Ahl Sunnat is to make sure that Wariana does not exist, to actually erase that old religion. But as you can see, uh, part of B is open, which is visible to everyone, and there's part of B that is under, that is not visible, that even Ahl Sunnat does not see it, it's under. And then under those two, under Ahl Sunnat and Wariana is the Mutakin presented by space A, which is actually partly visible, and then there's a part that is not seen. And so you will see that uh, these circles, these where they meet and intersect, and I would call those are the disputed, uh, that's the disputed space. Now, the space that is Y, the larger space that is Y, is actually a space whereby uh, is a space of negotiation. Our people that don't want a lot of controversy or don't want to be engaged, they are very nominal. It's a space of the nominal, but it's also a space of negotiation. The space X is non gare and non Muslim neighbors. They are people within the gare who are foreigners living there. They are teachers, they are doctors, they, they are government civil servants, they are business people, they are neither Muslims. Neither are they Gary, but they live among the Gary. So, so they are culture, they are, they are, they are, they are cultural outsiders to the Gary culture, religion, and life. Now, let me talk about the intersections as disputed space. The contestation in the space of ideas, land, and habitation causes cracks in the Gary religious identity that create room for other expressions. Informant Muhammad Noor Muhammad says that Gare are Muslims, but within, within are those of Abi Umur and Sheikh Hussein of Bali who follow the Quran and Hadith in varying degrees. By a stretch of my imagination, uh, could this syncretism be a stage in the process of conversion? So that conversion is not a one day event. It takes actually uh, generations and decades and even centuries to, to achieve. So, um, though very long from the entry of Islam in 1400s and now when it is finally stretched to Gary being fully Muslim, as uh, suggested by uh, Rambo, who has, um, uh, is a scholar of uh, conversions or conversion theorists 
uh, who has researched and written a lot regarding uh, conversion. And one of the theories, uh, the long term, that uh, 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 conversion does not just take place at one time and in one person, but it takes long. And, it, and, and, and when you consider groups or families, it can go over generations before people are fully converted. The disputed space at the intersections between Ahlisun, Atwarian, and Mutakun is characterized by the abolishment of drumming, destruction of Abuumuri shrines, certain funeral rituals. And the question of whether Gari Islam should be connected to Kenyan and global Islam is one that Wariana disputes. They have issues with Madaris that draw the Gari young people away from their traditional religion. The Mutakun seek for, 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 for a space for the book, for the black book, to be openly included in, 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 um, in the Gari space. They also desire transit from covert to overt practices of their faith. These are the key items that are negotiated beyond the intersections, both within the underlay and the overlay. The Wariana is partly hidden as an underlay of Ahlusunat and Mutakun, and Ahlusunat engages in hermeneutics, and they issue threats of violence to those that disagree with them and even throw stones at the Warian. And, and, and I had a story where they even go and they take sand they, and they throw it in a, in the Wariana food where they're having their public uh, feasts and meetings. This is evidence that they exist in disharmony, yet they are drawn together in harmony by tribal interests and defense of their common borders and the fight for a place in the national life of Kenya. Now, the space under the underlay, the space that in those, those circles, the A and B circles, they have that which is unseen that lies below. What lies beneath each circle? For the Wariana, there is rain, fertility, illness rituals lie beneath as they are still needed by the Gare. In Wariana religion, the Gare have their unique identity narrative. And the Mutakun, slow but steady growth is underground and Sibgatalahi is invisible to the public. So when you see that space A, there's that that lies beneath uh, Wariana and lies be, uh, beneath Ahlisunat. Uh, for the Mutakun is the Sibgatalahi, it is not evident to the public. Underneath Ahlisunat is the Salafi and Wahhabi radicalism, which is not uh, Real, readily seen by others. Um, uh, Gare religiously lived spaces distinctly divided into segments. So even Ahlusunat, although haven't shown there by Toshit, has something that lies beneath uh, that push by uh, uh, outside uh, radical mo Islamic movements that are influencing um, uh, some of the Ahlusunat to purify Islam in Gare. Now I talked of, you see that uh, X there. The X, the small circle X that is outside the Y, are the cultural outsiders. And also that is where Christians, that is the, the circle where Christians also operate uh, at. There is no indigenous Somali church within the Mandera County. Christians in this region represent denominations from other parts of Kenya. I cannot rule out the, the possible influence of the few non-Somali Christians in the region. Somalis in general are not known to openly embrace another religion or Muslim sect other than the Shafi Sunni Islam. And this may explain in part the relative failure of proselytization among them. As I have said, pointed out, Christians live on the edges of Y, in the domain of uh, the small circle there, X. And so the question remains, how can they be a witness for Christ? Back again to Wariana, there the space be. Um, Wariana as a living faith. It was necessary to find out aspects of the Wariana that are carryovers of the cult of the sky god. To do that, two questions were put to a group of Gary people. The first one, whether they had holy places uh, marked by shrines or tombs. And the second, what religion was practiced by Gary before Islam? 
Now a group of four elders, Osman, Majid, Hassan, and Muhammad, reported thus. The Gare respect their dead and tombs. In Kutulo, that's an area uh, between uh, Eluak and Mandera, they're in between. In Kutulo, there was a man named Abi Umar who was an Aulia, meaning friend of God. And the Gare even prayed for rain from him. Another one was Aulia Ache. In times past, if a man lost his cow or camel, he went to his tomb and invoked his name for Auliache to return his lost animal. If an individual desired his livestock to increase, he took a rope, tied the knot, and placed that rope on Auliache's tomb and said his wish. And it was so with barren women in need of children. Some Gary people do not practice these beliefs anymore, I think. These characters lived 200 to 300 years. So that was Majid, one of the elders that thought so. There was, an, there was also Abu Merkesha, in whose name harvest would be given as a sadaqa to people. Presently, we consider these practices to be foolishness. Some elderly Sufi men still visit these sites to perform these rituals. We can say that 99% of the Gare reject these outdated uh, practices. I, then I followed the same questions with another group in a different re uh, region unknown to each other for the sake of corroboration and clarification. This was to find out whether this knowledge was a preserve of a few or it was common in Gare. So then I met Imam Abdullah Hussein at a place called Kinto. Imam Abdullah Hussein and a group and put the same questions to them and that is what they responded. There is a hill called Bruini around Kutulo. When I was a child, I would pass nearby and see animals slaughtered and people would apply blood on their faces. Milk was also used in the ritual. The older religion of Gari was a form of Islam that had interesting rituals. It had a lot of animal sacrifices, but as people read and studied, these practices disappeared. At one point in history during Gare settlement, five saintly people were selected by God to perform distinct roles for the community. Abi Umur took care of livestock increase, children blessings, and family peace. He was best at Kutulo. Abu Karmashar was for successful farming, and his names were mentioned in planting and at harvest. Zakat was given in his name. He was based at Wargadud. Auliache oversaw lost livestock recovery. Ibn Kulay prevented lions from destroying livestock. And Abdur was in milk blessings and at weddings and in all family functions. And because of little knowledge, the Gare needed these folk practices to support their religion. These saints were ancient characters. It is said that Abu Karmashar once hit soil and it turned into maize. That is the testimony of those elders. The determinant of whether religion is dead is whether it answers to people's needs. If Warayana is perceived to solve people's problems, then it will remain relevant no matter how much some oppose it. Now, this is very important in conversion. Others call it like worldview transformation. When people are converting from one religion to another, it is a process, it's complex. They don't just convert in one day. There's a way that their previous religion answered their questions of life. And if the new religion does not answer all the questions of life, then yes, it will be a slow process uh, regarding that uh, conversion. Now again, back to the, to the Mutakun to find out how do they fit into the Gari religious space. The Mutakun are contesting for their space in Gareland. They participate in community activities that enhance propagation and strengthen social networks. 
It remains that the Mutakin are a group of Gare Muslims, but who are informed of aspects of the Bible. Uh, so when you look at um, in uh, that circle X there, positioned at the age of Y, uh, it's because um, X is a, is a cultural and religious um, outsider. So, um, and that's where Christians uh, dwell. How they have influence or how they influence others or their connection with the Mutakin, again, that is something that is worth exploring. Now, what do other what do the neighbors say about the Mutakin? What do other neighbors, Muslim neighbors, and other people? Gari Muslims who live alongside the Mutakin are aware of the unique expression of Islam but are not aware of their relation to the Bible and the reinterpretation of Jesus Christ. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the informants by the name Qasim Abdul Wahid attests that the Osman, he says, and I quote him, the Osman group are exemplary in all areas of their lives. They perform deeds of kindness to other members of the community, the Mutakun faith is good, and I desire to join them in the future." End of quote. I inquired to know whether the informant was aware of Sibgatalai, of which the respondent denied knowledge of this ritual, which means, again, as I've said, that that is part of the Mutakun that is actually underlaid beneath. It's not seen, but it's part of their practice. Again, uh, Mark Bayer says, joins conversion theorists in identifying four stages in the conversion process as acculturation, adhesion or hybridity, syncretism and transformation. He states that individuals stay at the adhesion and syncretism for a few generations, and then a revivalist movement occurs and another stage of conversion occurs that they reject the old and embrace the new light. They realize how wrong they were and discard their old complaint. And I think here, um, uh, Mark Bay describes accurately the Gary situation uh, and their conversion uh, process. They're on a journey of conversion. In conclusion, I have examined Gare's identity of Sunni Muslim of Shafi Law School and found out that it is a multi-layered entity. There are a variety of competing expressions in tension under this identity. Initially, the Gare worshipped Waka, the sky god, and observed a range of ceremonies in his appeasement. The sky god through, through his agents, the Wadad, met the immediate needs of the Gare that emanated from the world of spirits. The entry of Islam elevated them from their worship of the one god, Waqa, to that of Allah, the only god of Islam. The Gare needs to remain the same. Relevant elements from the cult of the, the sky god were joined to Islam so that Waqa's space never ceased completely, but was transformed into a syncretistic religion of the Warayana. Also, Husseinia Sufism. The Ahl Sunnah and the Mutakun allege that Warayana is diminishing due to opposition from emerging reform. However, due to the functional aspect of Gare religion, Warayana remains relevant. Warayana adherents claim that Ahl Sunnat are reformers by day and at night pay allegiance to the Warayana. Actually, that is what uh, the Abbasera that I met told me. They oppose us during the day, but when they are sick, when they are in need, they come to us at night. Such a situation is like the one reported by, 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 by Mario Aguila. Again, Mario Aguila, the professor who was my examiner at my doctoral, distinguished scholar of uh, Northern Kenya and uh, 
uh, professor at the University of Edinburgh. So, so he reported that in Garbatula, where Ayana followers do not want to be identified, yet inside them they think otherwise. This is this um, study, this paper suggests that the entry of Islam in the Gare landmarks the beginning of their conversion journey. The changes that took place throughout the centuries from Waka, Warayana, Islam, Ahle Sunnat, and now Mutakun, are faces in the long process of conversion from traditional religion to an ideal Islam. Therefore, what this research identified as a syncretistic religion of Warayana would only be a stage in that process, and that the entry of Ahli Sunnat and Mutakun are faces nearing the completion towards full conversion into Islam and beyond. And we are interested in this beyond. Here are people, their identities are on the move, they are on a journey. The, the, the space in, in their space that seems to be tight under one um, identity of Sunni Islam, of Shafi school, their cracks, their crevices. And that is where we are talking that there is room for the conversion process. That is Gare's identity on the move. The Gare experience of space as open within the community boundaries points to the Gare nomadic life, which depicts free movement and fluidity without permanency. Space is dynamic. It renews itself through the human life cycle and ecosystem, just like people die in Gare land but never cease to live. This conceptual understanding of space is of interest to Christian mission, and the theme of this conference, which is conversion, multiple contexts and multiple perspectives. Finally, friends, an understanding of how the Mutakin group gained entry into the Gary space of religion opens new ways to appreciate the wider mission horizons of people that are not typically receptive to the Bible message. It is a model of a community that seemingly closed to new religious thinking, but has what I call loopholes that let other ideologies negotiate for their space. It is a tool for missiologists, social space activists, and even political ideologues who intend to claim a stake in the Muslim space. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and the end will come. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless us and bless us all and give us the wisdom to recognize those open spaces and cracks in similar societies so that the work of conversion can take place. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. And I just want to announce once again that at uh, 4.30 p.m. East African time, we will have a panel discussion with Dr. Asindo and Dr. Petras Bahadur uh, that is entitled Understanding the Motivation and Drivers Behind Muslim to Christian Conversion. So I want to invite everyone not to miss this opportunity and also I want to encourage all of you to ask questions to uh, participate in the discussions. And uh, you have this opportunity at the right uh, panel of your, uh, from your presentation, from the video. You, you have a special panel where you can use chat. You can chat uh, in general chat. You can participate in general chat. And also you can 
ask questions and send meetings with uh, some of the attendees of the conference. Also, I want to encourage you to rate this presentation uh, just immediately below the video, you can see uh, the opportunity to, to, to make a rating of, of the presentation. So you can also do this. And uh, now uh, we will have a break up to 10.30, up to 10.30. And I just want to announce what we will have after the break. At 10.30, we will have a presentation by, presentation by Dr. Gabriel Masva, the Lord gives us Africa or we die, African local evangelist and their approaches to making converts in early Adventism. At 11, we will have presentation by Dr. Zaitsev, conversion in Orthodox religious cultural context. At 11.30, we will have a presentation by Dr. Gjirgius Yusri, conversion theories and terminologies in Islamic perspective. And at 12 at noon, we will have a presentation by James, Dr. James Mutua, conversion in the life of King Nebuchadnezzar. So I want to invite all of you to actively participate in these uh, presentations. And uh, at 12.30, we will have a networking. This is also an important opportunity for us to social, social um, to be together and to uh, to discuss many important issues about conversion. So now uh, we will have a break until ten uh, until ten thirty, and at ten thirty uh, we will continue with the uh, first uh, breakout uh, session with the first presentation by Dr. Gabriel Masla. Thank you very much for the participation and be with us. Thank you.